Hey John, this video is brought to us by headphones.com. Okay, see you later. Regular viewers will know that I'm very much into techno, but regular viewers will not know that I'm really not so much into house music. The whole sort of boots and cats and boots and cats kind of rhythmic structure doesn't do very much for me. But there are some exceptions, and one of those I'm going to recommend you go listen to today because audiophiles, when they think of electronic music, a lot of them think about Kraftwerk, Tangerine Dream, and Yellow. So here is a house music track from Express 2, from 2002, that features Dieter Meyer from Yellow, called I Want You Back. It's well worth going to track this down on streaming services and giving it a listen, really. It is house music. It's not techno. But yeah, it's pretty good. And if you like Yellow, you're probably going to like this. And I was playing this actually just this morning before we started filming because I was just doing the final check and setup on what I have behind me here. That is a pair of Zoo Soul 6, but we're not talking about them today. We're talking about super integrated amplifiers or streaming amplifiers. And what I like about streaming amplifiers is they're kind of small and there's everything inside. So there's a network streamer, a DAC, an amplifier, and some other things sometimes. And one amplifier I keep coming back to that I've owned for a few years now is the name Unity Atom. It's a shoebox size amplifier, 40 watts per channel, class AB amplification. And it also gives us access to Rune, to Tidal, to Kobos, to Chromecast. So pretty much anything that runs Chromecast, like SoundCloud. Anyway, what I love about the name Unity Atom is that I can put it on my sideboard, connect a power cable, a network cable, I could use Wi-Fi if I wanted to, connect loudspeaker cable, and I'm up and running with music in less than 10 minutes. But this year, Cambridge Audio introduced the Evo series of amplifiers. There's the Evo 75 and the Evo 150, which I have here. And that too is an all-in-one integrated streaming amplifier, just add loudspeakers. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So the Cambridge Audio Evo 150 is a super integrated amplifier in that streamer DAC amplifier built in. It's class D. So that means this is the third in a series of videos about class D amplifiers. And we get 150 watts per channel from Hypex Encore modules. So with the name in-house and the Cambridge Audio in-house, obviously people are gonna ask, how do they compare? And some people will ask, which one is best? And I want to tackle that today and we'll go straight into sound quality with this album, Caribou's Swim, which is now 10 years old, oh my God. So the Cambridge amplifier exposes more of the finer details in the Caribou album, but cutting over to the name, it's plainly the more lively sounding piece. I've been playing quite a lot of Tipper recently and Dave Tipper's album, Jettison Mind Hatch from 2019. It's only available on Bandcamp and on streaming services. There's no physical formats on it. I recommend you go and have a listen to it. It's electronic music. The Cambridge makes it sound more stately and it seems to have 
better focus lock and therefore better image specificity than the name. And when paired with the Sonus Fauber Lumina 2 that we reviewed recently, for me, the Cambridge has the wider soundstage, the deeper soundstage. It just sounds more internally spacious. It makes sort of the, the soundstage look more like a fish tank full of sounds, metaphorically speaking. The Unity Atom gives us more straight ahead rhythmic expression, more dynamic punch, and it's more predisposed, I think, to extract maximum drama from, say, Idol's new single or the very first House of Love album. Whereas the Evo 150 from Cambridge is more concerned, more concerned than the name is anyway, with subtlety and nuance. And the Cambridge Amp's smoother top end is better suited to acoustic cuts like the Arcadia single from Lana Del Rey that just came out. And also pretty much anything from Neil Young's latest archive release, the Live at Carnegie Hall album. So the name is more of a sort of lean in listen. Whereas the Cambridge is more of a, a laid back, a lean back listen. And that has an impact on loudspeaker matching because I prefer the name Unity Atom with the zoos behind me, but I prefer the Evo 150 from Cambridge with the Sonus Farbe Lumina 2 stand mount loudspeakers. So asking which one is best is like trying to decide whether Dark Side of the Moon is better than Wish You Were Here or not, or like trying to pick between Kid A or Amnesiac. They tend to divide a room. And I think these amps will as well, on sound quality. But sound quality isn't the only branch on our decision tree. So one thing you won't necessarily know from reading about these products or watching YouTube videos is that the Cambridge is the slightly larger unit, but it's also the lighter of the two. The name is very squat, if you like, and it's heavy, probably because it's class AB and has this enormous toroidal transformer inside, which the Cambridge doesn't have because it's class D. But the Evo has a neat party trick to change its appearance a little bit because in the box, and I love this, the Cambridge have supplied these, are two substitute side panels. So you can take off the kind of patterned black side panels and put on a pair of walnut if they better suit your furnishings or your just your personal taste really. So you, you can change the way the Cambridge looks. I think that's really cool. You can't do that with the name. Remote control. This is an important issue for people who like to use the traditional remote ones. The name comes with something quite special, actually. It's a backlit remote, and that means you don't have to point it at the Unity Atom to get it to do something. Whereas you do with the Cambridge, because it's infrared, you really, and you really do have to point it at the Cambridge. And I don't love the buttons on the Cambridge remote control. They're kind of these thin, smaller buttons and I, I much prefer the backlit ones on the on the name but that's a personal thing you might prefer the Cambridge remote and name give us the best reason to get out of our chair and put the remote down because its volume wheel on the top I think is one of the best volume wheels in the world period end of story and poor Cambridge they can't really compete they've got two wheels on the front of their device the black wheel is for volume the silver outer wheel is for source selection, which is a nice little arrangement, but it's just, it just doesn't feel as nice as the name. And then when we're doing source selection and changing volume, I gotta say, I do prefer the typeface that name use. And the GUI on the Cambridge is just as good as names, but I do have a couple of minor quibbles. I wish that certain things were larger, like 
on a Toslink input, I want to see the sample rate showing me the signal lock as much bigger. Certainly, you know, I don't need to see an enormous Toslink type logo and then have 48 kilohertz in small print that I can't, I can't read it from the listening position, even with glasses on. Does that make me sound like a real old man? I can't read it from the listening position. It needs to be bigger. <laughs> I think it does. But I will add that even though many inputs, many of the streaming inputs on both amplifiers are auto detecting. And so if you punch in Rune, it will cut over to Rune. You punch in Spotify, it will cut over to Spotify. You punch in something on Tidal, it will cut over to that. Even though those exist, that outer silver wheel on the Cambridge allows us to rotate through those inputs, all of them, including the hardwired inputs. And I think that makes it more beginner friendly. So, so far, it's level pegging when it comes to sound quality, but I think the name just shades the Cambridge when it comes to aesthetics and haptics, especially haptics. But what comes next might swing people back towards the Cambridge never to return because the Cambridge has some extra inputs that the name does not. Chief among them, MM Phono Stage. It's not an amazing phono stage, but it's not terrible. It's about the sort of shit manny kind of level. It also has balanced inputs, balanced analog inputs. Now I find this really useful because I have my turntable over here and then I run out of my phono stage balanced into the Cambridge amp behind me. I can't do that with the name because it doesn't have balanced inputs and I have to use balanced cables because they're better suited to longer runs. But also worth mentioning is that the Evo 150 is a few hundred euros cheaper than the name Unity Atom. But whichever one you choose, you'll still get what I think is the biggest advantage of amplifiers, super integrated amplifiers like this or things that I call Futurify. The biggest advantage of these you will still get. And that is because they're so easy to set up and because they have such abundant connectivity you end up fussing over connections less and just playing more music. I enjoyed this review more than many others for some time because it wasn't, I didn't have to really think about too much because everything's just there and it works. And I could just, I ended up playing all sorts of music from all sorts of different sources. And so with Spotify Connect on board, Tidal Connect on board, Rune and therefore Rune Radio, I ended up discovering discovering a whole bunch of new music, like that Tipper album, but also like the new single from Call Super, which I think is fantastic. Also the new Idols single, and also a band called the Viagra Boys, who are, I think they're a punk band from Sweden. Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. And had I not been reviewing the Cambridge Audio Evo 150 and comparing it to the name Unity Atom, I might never have discovered this band. Don't get me wrong, it's not all about the music. People that say that, no. No, it's, you know, it's hardware and music and then you have to decide where you sit on that scale. I'm just the other side of 50% in favor of music, but only just. But I guess that's where my concept of music first audiophile comes from. That's what I self-identify as. Self-identify. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. Obviously, the Cambridge Evo 150 and also by association, the name Unity Atom, are not for journeyman audiophiles. Once you buy one of these and you put it down, there's nothing to upgrade. Not really. So 
They are for people who just want to set and forget. And I think this is a tremendous growth area for the hi-fi world. I really do. I love these kinds of products because people like to poo-poo them as lifestyles. The dudes with racks full of separates, and I'm looking at mine over here, so I'm one of them. But dudes with separates love to look down on this kind of product, but I think they're making a mistake because it, these products do bring it closer to that horrible cliche of it's all about the music because they just make access to music far easier, far more agreeable and far less fussy, you know, because separates can sound better, yes, but you have to choose them. You have to build your own system. You have to decide what works well with what. And with all-in-one super integrators like these, the manufacturer, Cambridge name, have sorted out the so-called synergy between the streamer, the DAC, and the amp. So the only access point that you need to rotate around is the amp speaker connection. I think that's fantastic because it removes a little bit of the crazy from the whole hi-fi scene because there's a lot of crazy there. People drive themselves crazy about which DAC to buy, which streamer to buy, which amp to buy. Just one of these will do you just really, really nicely. And they don't take up a lot of room. You just have one box and speakers. I think that's, for people who really value the aesthetics of their room and really kind of want to look after that, this is the ideal solution. Anyway, if you like this video, please hit the like button down below. If you like my attitude towards high-end audio in that, you know, I do care about aesthetics a lot. I care about the physical intrusion of my hardware. I'm constantly battling with it, actually. I'm constantly moving gear around my lounge room. This is my lounge room to not make it look like a sound lab. So if you dig that, please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.